Welcome to Yeshua Ministries, from his heart to yours. And I'm your host, Prophetess Denise Yvette. And may Ruah Hokadash, who is Holy Spirit, may he ignite your hearts today as we partake in ministry. Man, you know God is so good. He just He just has me bump into to the world and allows me to bring them on my show. Today we have none other than John John Harold of Troop on our show. And our, our topic today is going to be the man, the ministry, and the music. Hallelujah. God is so good. And you know what? I already know that God has put a word in your belly for us. So I'm excited and I'm ready to hear that. But before we go into the ministry portion of our song, let's give God all the glory, all the honor that is due unto his holy name. You know me, music is truly a bridge between heaven and earth. So today we have none other than Purpose from GMEG record, record label, and they're gonna come to us with an A selection right now entitled, Never Too Much. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair Persecuted, but not abandoned Struck down, but not destroyed Never too much, never too much, no, no Give it over to God and just let it go
just let it go. Oh. Hallelujah. You know, I just thank and praise the Lord for the youth of this day and age. Because, you know, it's the tribe of Judah that is going to take us through. You know, uh, when the Israelites, when they were released, who went before them? It was the, it was the tribe of Judah. You know, and so it's going to take that voice, that melody of praise to, to get us through. So now, thank you, Purpose. Hallelujah. John John Harold, the music, the ministry, and the man. So which order comes first? Um, I would just probably say the, the music, because I think the music has always been inside of me vocally since I was a child, maybe three years old. Three years old. But not really beginning to sing it until the age of around six. Six? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then, okay. I, then I, you know, established and started playing the drums at around seven, eight years old. Mm -hmm. And, you know, pretty much music has always just been stuck with me was pretty much all my life. Just part of your Started from my family, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so are there people in your background, mom or dad, yes. who sings? How many people in your, is your whole family musicality, as they call it? Is everybody musical? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, two sisters and a brother, and my mom, and we all sang around the piano at home and, mm -hmm. and started traveling to different churches throughout Los Angeles and oh, Pasadena awesome. and singing pretty much throughout the county, singing at, at all type of churches all the time. Amen. Just amen. Raised in it. So when did you accept the Lord as your Savior? I was nine, about nine years old. About nine years old. Yeah. And let me ask you this question. So when did you, okay, before I go into anything personal about you, I'm going to take what you just told me and I'm going to show you some ministry in it. The, the, the Israelites, you know, they had their priest mm -hmm. and then they had their, their, um, their musicians. Mm -hmm. And do you know that they were all family? They were all brothers and sisters and uncles and aunts, and they were tribes that were, that were uh, ordained to do nothing but worship God. And it was generational. Yeah. So, so obviously, you truly are from the tribe of Judah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. That's awesome. But and see, people don't understand that. You right. know, w when they look at uh, different types of people, you know, uh, a lot of black people, African-American people, a lot of us, uh, we sing. And you know what? Most of us are from the tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's created inside created. of us. It's something that you cannot help do. You go to sleep at night. Do you hear melodies? All the time. All the time. All the time. Um, do you write music as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so when does your writing start? In the mornings, in the evenings? How does that work? It actually happens in dreams. In you dreams. Know, I will hear uh, just, you know, orchestration of music in my dreams. And, and sometimes, this is what I would do. It Sometimes I would pick up my little recorder uh -huh. and hum a little something. Uh -huh. But if I didn't hum what I heard from the dream, it's pretty much, it's a gun. Yeah. So a lot of times, uh, people in the music industry, we would call those, those are those missing hits that you, you, you would let have go. had, yeah, that you let go. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. I can attest to that. God yeah. gave me one, and I'm back in the studio on it. Uh, it's called Resurrected by Love. Right. And actually, I went to heaven. I had a visitation because I asked God, um, how did the Holy Spirit mortify the deeds of the flesh? So he took me up to heaven, and he showed me the works of Holy Spirit. And when I woke up that morning, I had the song in my heart, and I had the scripture and everything. But it's not about me. It's not about me. It's all about you today. Oh, yeah. So now my next question to you is, is, when did you, okay, everybody, this is John John Harold of Troop. He's one of the lead singers. So when did you start singing in the group Troop? I got at the age of between 15 and 16. Uh-huh, yeah. 15 and 16, Which okay. 1984, 1984 is when the group first got together. Uh-huh. Uh, and then 85 was when, let me see. Mama Gosh, Sita. My goodness, was that's Mama 1988. Sita? Uh, Mama Sita was 1988? Yeah. Mama Sita, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me ask you something. Um, you know, when I first met the Lord, my pastor told me that I could not dance and serve God. 
and it crushed me because I could no longer be that dancer. I mean, I had trained professionally to be a professional dancer, and I was told that something I was trained to be, something that I am, I could no longer do. And now everywhere you see there is um, interpretive dancing and singing mm -hmm. going on. Oh, yeah. So your gift for the Lord, you got saved when you were nine years old, you indicated? Mm -hmm. And you started singing secular music at what age? All my life. All your life? Okay. <laughs> so, and Troop got together in 1984, but did that do anything to your walk with Christ? Uh, singing secular music, has has that hindered your walk or increased uh, your your walk with God, the, the intimacy level? It increased it later. Um, in the beginning, yeah, I had a few people who, who knew God, but they didn't do God. Uh -huh. And, you know, the ones who actually really do God, they're the ones who go to church. Yes. They pray, they fast. And the ones that just know him, some of them had told me, this is what I think that you really should be doing. Just gospel, just gospel. And in the beginning, you know, it hurt. Uh, but, you know, you take your your stones and your rocks and you just pick them up and you keep, you keep on moving. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so as I got older, older in the music industry, uh, it, it helped my um, my walk with God to become more stronger. Mm -hmm. Because when you enter into the music industry, you you enter into the music industry uh, with a new level of devils. Yes, you so do. So when you grow, when you, when you start out to be a young Christian, and you're going to church, and you're going to a missionary Baptist church, you're pretty much being told that Jesus died, he's coming back. Jesus died, he rose again, he's coming back. Jesus died, he rose again, he's coming back. And that's all I was being told. But when I entered the music industry, it pretty much, it, I started experiencing devils on all types of Come levels. Come on now. So I need to be told more than just Jesus died and he's, and he's coming, coming back. back. <laughs> you need to know that he's here and now with yes, you, huh? Exactly. So, so in other words, so being in the secular industry and being and having a relationship with God that caused your relationship to heighten, to go up to a different level. Yeah. Because the devils were coming after you, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. That is really deep. So, you know, the Bible says in Ephesians 1 and 7 that we should be rooted and grounded in God's love. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, you can actually sing in the secular arena and still be on fire for God. Yes, you can because, um, as, as we talked about it earlier, that God just doesn't need his his people in the four walls of the church, uh -huh. but he also needs his people on the outside of, of the walls of the church. Come on now, can't can't the pastor go into the uh, into the into the uh, the nightclubs and the pubs and and can't him and the missionary crew can't they go in there and get them out? They they could, but they but they I was one of them told me one day that I'll never be on be able to stand on the type of stage that you stand That's on. That's right. That so it, it, it's up to you for you to let God use you to put his people through versus just, you know, you always hear all the time. Because there's certain times when you're out and you're about and you're on different stages, that's your time to be able to tell people about God. Amen. And, amen. Yeah. So even though you may be singing a love song, a beautiful melodic love song to a lady, your life, what has your life done? that would resonate through that song? It's a life of love. Wow. It's, it's kind of like you're asking me a question. I've I, I met several people that said that they've had children, mm -hmm. you know, with our music. And I've always heard pastors, they say, well, you know, we need something to set the mood right. I'm not going to take my wife to bed on I will trust in the Lord. <laughs> you know, I mean, you need something to set the mood Amen. right. So they're going to need that Teddy Pendergrass, that Marvin Gaye, that... That truth. And they're going to need that. They're going to need and, that yeah, truth. To set the mood to right. To set the mood right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I believe that. I also believe that your spirit, who you are, your DNA, it crosses over into the music. So mm -hmm. even though it's a secular love song, it is still the love of Christ is still mm -hmm. coming through that. Absolutely. Because God touches everything that you do. Mm -hmm. You know, the prayer of Jabez, oh, that he would bless the works of my hands. My hands right. Amen. So can you for me right now? You know, I know you don't have your music on you, but is it possible you could, could kind of give me some kind of a little mm -hmm. sample, you know, because my viewing audience, 
They want to know. They, they, they need to hear and, and, and hear that beautiful voice. And, and I'm just going to ask that they would uh, stop the music from going on in the audio department so that um, we can hear your beautiful voice in sure. the name of Jesus. Sure. Well, I know that there's a lot of people that are out there looking at me now saying, how does John John be able to get play a part on a television show that they're talking about God? That's well, right. you know, I grew up in it. And he told me that every time that I record a solo project, to always remember him. So I have a gospel song, which is recorded by my favorite gospel group of all time, the Winans. Amen. And the name of that song is called Straighten My Life Out Again. So oh. I'm going to give you a little piece of it. Uh, n n did you write this? or, or no, this it's, is just it's one of those? Yeah, yeah. So you did write it? No, no, no. Oh. no this, this was written by Marvin Winans. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. But it's one of your favorite one songs. One of my favorite songs from them, oh. yeah. Amen. Please, please. I have to admit, but I thought I had it under total control. Feelings inside seemed override what I know. And I'll take the blame. And I feel quite ashamed that I let it go this far. But I'm coming to you, honest and true, telling you to do what you have to for I don't want to love wrong. I don't want to see wrong. I don't want to be wrong. So straighten my life out again. Oh, amen. That's gorgeous. I love that song. I love that song. Actually, I've cried on that song a couple of times when, when I missed the mark, you know, because I, I love the whinings. We all grew up on the whinings. And, um, you know, if they ever need some help, they might be knocking at your door after hearing that song. <laughs> after hearing that song right there. But let's just turn it a little bit. We've got a little bit of more time left on the clock. We know about the man. You grew up uh, in church. You grew up singing um, from a young boy. It's in your blood. It's in your DNA. We understand that you are able to perform in the secular arena and still hold on to your confession of faith, that you are still out there making disciples because God has sent you to the highways and hedges. So we know that. But what my audience needs to know right now is there's a lot going on in the world right now. You know, we're, we're going through the uh, protests due to the um, different ones that are being passed away, um, you know, wrongful death going on. And so what I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to reach out to the men, to the black man, to the white man, to the black woman, to the white woman. You see, the spirit of hatred, it's color blind, you know, yes. and, and, and the world needs to understand that it's not about race, right. but it's about your soul. Mm -hmm. And that the adversary's plot is to put us against one another and let us annihilate one another. So can you speak to my audience on that? And can you just reach out to them with the love that you have in your heart and pull them in for Jesus? Can you do that for me? Well, every day that you wake up in the morning, there is a choice that you have to make. That choice is you're going to have to go ahead and make up in your mind and make up in your heart to be able to do what God has called you to do. Either you're going to do bad, or you're going to do right. You're going to do right, or you're going to do wrong. It's your choice that you have to make every day that you wake up in the morning. Because just like the enemy has a job, so do you. And that is his job. His job is to rob you, to kill you, to steal from you, and to destroy you. That is his job every day. So when he sees that you're waking up, he's trying to find out what way to be able to get, what is going to get on that last nerve that you have. That's what the enemy wants. He wants that last nerve to actually really make you go off onto the other side and to really do something crazy that he has always wanted you to do. So are you going to do what he wants you to do? 
Or are you going to do what God wants you to do? And that's the question that we have to ask ourselves every day. We have a job to do because Satan is definitely going to be trying to do his job every day. He has a job to do. What are you going to do about your job? Amen, amen. I like that, and that's something to think about because we try to scapegoat. There are people right now that are out there rioting and protesting, and they're doing it just for the sake of rioting and protesting. You know why? Because they don't have no job. Exactly, and that's a matter of choice. It's a matter of choice. Yes. Yeah. It is a matter of choice. They're looting, they're rioting, mm -hmm. they're causing dishevel and, and term, turmoil because they don't have anything to do. You see, the Bible clearly says that a, 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 an idle mind is a devil's workshop. Yes. So if, you, if you're over 15 years old and you're sitting at home all day long looking at TV and you ain't got no job or you ain't going to school, your mind is idle. And right. God is messing with you, excuse me, and the adversary is messing with you. And the Lord wants you to know that it's time to come on and do some things in God's house. Right. And his house is this entire world. Just as John John said, this whole world belongs to God, all of his children. And it's truly not a racist war. It is the adversary out to annihilate the human race. Do you agree? That's right, yeah. Amen. Amen. Okay, so now we got a few more minutes on the clock. Where are you guys, where's Troop going to be performing at next? Troop is actually doing a concert tonight. Well, not like a concert, maybe just a little mini performance for a masquerade ball party for Bishop Don Magic One, um, mm -hmm. who actually now has his own radio show and has actually... Uh, gotten in contact with his partner Snoop Dogg to even to have him to have his own radio show so uh, pretty much God is still in the blessing business. So, oh, amen, yeah. amen. Oh, also, who hosts, you are the co-host of what? Accelerated Radio Rhythm and Good News which airs every Sunday night on acceleratedradio.net www.acceleratedradio.net Net. And what type of music does it play? We play something for everybody. Something for everybody. And it's all positive. It's godly. It's spiritual. It's, uh, it's, it's poetry. It's comedy. Uh, it's comedy. It's, uh, it's holy hip hop. Yes, it is. It's uh, Christian rock. They play my rock. music. They yes. play my music. <laughs> <laughs> we, de we definitely do. We, we play her music. We play everybody. As, yes. As long as it's you know, saying something positive, we'll play it. The great thing about it is that uh, we get to play whatever that it is, but as long as it's, you know, if measures it's right. Up. Yeah, as long exactly. as it measures up. Okay, now you guys used to be on the oh, air from... I forgot, I forgot. Oh, go ahead. And, and with my partner, Stevie Dreamer. Yeah, with Stevie Dreamer. Yeah. Come on, what about my girl? Sandra. Yes. Uh, oh, and uh, Lillian, Lily Lillian. G. Lily Which G. I, uh, this is going to be her last um, program on this Sunday because she's getting ready to go to to have. She's with the child, so yes. she's getting ready to have that. Yes, and she's a beautiful person. Yes. I was on the show uh, early part of this year, and uh, she is a beautiful person. You guys have an awesome crew, mm -hmm. and I love Accelerated Radio. And you guys, sometimes you just need to turn off the TV and listen to the radio and listen to some music and really hear some things that's going on in real time. Thank you, Kevin Nash. Yes, thank you, Kevin Nash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, okay. So, um we got about four minutes to go. I want to do a quick altar call, and then if purpose will come back up. Um, but first of all, for my viewing audience, you guys need to know that Jesus loves you. You need to know that all you have to do is just say, Lord God, forgive me. I'm a sinner. Hallelujah. I invite you into my life. I make you king of kings and Lord of lords. If you've said those words, know that God loves you. Know that you are accepted into his kingdom. Hallelujah. Now God mandates that you find a church, that you get plugged in. He mandates that you are baptized in the name of Jesus and be filled with Holy Spirit. That's Ruah Hokadash. So now know that you are a child of God. So we're going to invite Purpose up. They are going to uh, come and uh, take us out. Thank you so much. Is you walking in your victory? Yes, sir. 
using what is your foundation? His words. See, you gotta let your spirit man eat merch. Well, I don't know how. How you do that? Where you gonna learn? Where you gonna learn? Where you gonna learn? How you, how you, how you, how you do that? Where you gonna learn? How you, how you, how you, how you do that? Where you gonna learn? Is you walking in your victory? Yes, sir. Using what is your foundation? His words. See, you gotta let your spirit man eat merch. Well, I don't know how. How you do that? Where you gonna learn? Talk to you real quick Laced in the world Walking in deliverance Foundation sitting firm That's what the business is Sold out And this God is my witness Okay And we play no games Hands down No why Cause we unashamed No boasting Just bold in Christ So I'm fire for the Lord Like you midnight ha. Amped up But at the same time I simmer down I tell my flesh And let my spirit lie Am I walking in my victory I'm wearing the crown Because my father is the king And I know that now Moving in my faith Devil get up out my Tell me down, but he can't uh, uh, I know you hit it So quit fighting your flesh, move in your spirit Is you walking in your victory? Yes, sir Using what is your foundation? His words See, you gotta let your spirit man eat merch Well, I don't know how, how you do that Where you gonna learn? Knock, knock, special delivery It's the Lord that God and he here to give you victory Look, my life used to be flatlined Clear. Now I'm living my life and I'm baptized Hand in the sky like I'm hitting my name Crazy, praying hard to the Holy Spirit Slay me, and I ain't talking about death I'm talking about rest, get it off my chest Okay, yeah, I had to break up out of prison, me And now I'm fighting with more armor than the militant Devil always been a foe, ain't nothing really different Besides the fact I chose Christ and stuck to my commitment I must say that it's been a success So am I walking in my victory? Yes Okay rock a baby, I'm killing the flesh Is you walking in your victory? Yes, sir Using what is your foundation? His words See, you gotta let your spirit man eat merch. Well, I don't know how, how you do that. Where you gonna learn? Where you gonna learn? Where you gonna learn? How you, how you, how you, how you do that? Where you gonna learn? How you, how you, how you, how you do that? Where you gonna learn? Is you walking in your victory? Yes, sir. Using what is your foundation? His words. See, you gotta let your spirit man